we're going to look at a few dielectric constants. Air, it's approximately 1. We've done all of our calculations assuming the gap was empty, that it was vacuum. And that's how we got the electric field. Well, air has a very minuscule effect. There's such, such a low density of matter that it doesn't do much. So we just call it 1. So that's why we did our demo. We didn't evacuate the room. We went ahead and allowed there to be air. You can put plastic in the gap. And then K is about 3. So now that's really starting to reduce the electric field and could have a measurable effect on the capacitor. You could put essentially any insulator. We always do paper and plastic, so K paper is about 3. Most of these sort of common insulators, it's somewhere 3 to 5, whatever. But then depending on the molecular structure of the insulator, you can get different values. For instance, water is very different. It's a liquid, and the water molecule has a large electric field in it. So all it has to do is let that molecule align the way it wants to in the gap field, and it'll reduce it significantly, and its K is about 80. So you get a big reduction um, if you put in water. So there's many things you can put in. So let's now look at our capacitor and see if we can see the effect of putting an insulator between the plates. So here we go. I'm going to uh, charge it up by induction again. So bring in the rod and let the plates charge up, take the rod away. I think we got a reasonable number. Yeah, I got about seven, that's what they usually get. And now we're going to take this plastic sheet, just acrylic sheet, and drop it in the gap and see what it does. So it looks like it went down around, I think, about three. Okay, and then pull it back out, and it went back up. may not have recovered all the way, but it definitely goes back up. So putting the plastic in changed the capacitor. It actually changed the voltage it needed to hold that charge. Let's look at what's happening sort of at a microscopic scale. So let's think, how could it be? If it lowered the voltage, it must have <coughs> increased the capacitance. Right? So let's see. So if we had the two um, plates here and here, if we think about it, when you drop in the insulator, and if it becomes what we call polarized, if, it, uh, if the electrons sort of shift, you get a little bit of negative charge over here, and you get a little positive charge over here. So it's effectively making more capacitance. Right? It's making more charged planes that are close to each other, and they're closer together than they were before. So you can see in this big picture view why we can increase the capacitance. So let's see how they do this with capacitors in the real world. So here's a real capacitor. It's got 4.7 millifarads of capacitance. That's quite a bit compared to our 18 picofarad little capacitor, and it's a lot smaller. So to find out, the only way to find out is to start to take it apart. So let me uh, begin to cut on this little guy here. The package comes off pretty easy. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So this is just a label. You don't need the label, that's for sure. And then you can start to see what's going on inside. Yeah, so you can see it's just a metal can. One side is actually grounded to the can or connected to the can electrically. This side isn't. This is the side we want to go after here. And we'll just start uh, gnawing it apart. This thing here. And the edge comes off. There's got to be something good in here to get 4.7 millifarads going. Let's see. Mm -hmm. You could be watching funny cats, or you could be watching this. Really, I think this is better. Okay, so now I've got the can sort of open. Oh, this is some sort of an electrode here. Let me see if I can pull the assembly out. Ooh, ooh, it's wet. It's wet. That's interesting. There's a little band is holding it together. So let's get that little band off of it, like that. And now, I don't know what chemicals are getting on my fingers, but there's something wet on here. And now, it may be alive. I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, let me get this piece to come off that piece. There we go. And now you can see it's starting to unwrap with wet paper. 
So we talked about water has a very high dielectric constant. So the color using water is the gap inside the gap. And you can see oh, the paper is the gap. So the paper is between these two gray electrodes. There's one on this side coming off, and now there's one on this side coming off. And you can see they have the paper in between. So they've put a dielectric in the gap, and they want a really big gap. So here's the gap. It's these two electrodes, and it comes apart more and more and more and more and more and more. Look at that. Oh, it's still going. There it is, all the way to there. There's the whole capacitor. And there's an electrode on one side and an electrode on the other side. So that's how they get 4.7 millifarads in such a small package. Now I'm going to put it back together and uh, put it back together and we'll put it back in the computer I took it out of. There's one more thing I want to show you with capacitors. So almost all capacitors in the world are like this, the ones that go in circuits. This is the one that I just took apart and I went ahead and wrapped it back up and put it all back together. Um, but there are other uses for capacitors and in the world. One is this. This is a stud sensor. So this is something that, that detects studs. So let's see if we calibrate it and then move it along. Yeah, that seems to be working pretty well. Um, the way this works, though, is based on capacitance. So it's this little handheld device. It's not much to it. It's got a battery in it. The way it works is actually, if we look at it this way, it's got two little plates like this. And those are conducting plates, and those are a capacitor. Remember, a capacitor doesn't have to be two parallel plates. Any two conducting objects near each other that hold charge technically make a capacitor. So these things are sort of inside the instrument like this. And the instrument somehow measures the capacitance. It's applying charge, and you get an electric field that kind of goes like that. So the electric field lines will go into the space past the plates. So now, if you put this against a wall, that's the kind of studs they're actually referring to. So if this is the wall of your house and you're looking for the stud, the stud being the big board in the wall that you can use to nail a heavy picture to, if you want to know where it is, you hold it here and when it first beeps, it's calibrating and figuring out what kind of a dielectric do I have here. If there's just air behind the wall, it measures a certain capacitance because we know that Putting a dielectric there will change the capacitance. So it measures the capacitance for nothing behind the wall. And then as it moves along, it'll beep when it sees a big change in the capacitance. And that occurs when the plates are here. Now you have a change in the dielectric in the field region, in the region where the electric field is. And then when you move along and keep going, you're back to just an empty wall. So. Capacitance can be used in interesting ways other than just storing energy in a circuit.